I'm joined by Democratic Congressman Lloyd Doggett of Texas. He's a member of the Budget and Ways and Means Committee and the Democratic Congressman Adam Smith of Washington, the ranking member of the Armed Services Committee. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you for uh, being with us. I want to bring you the latest news, although you may know this already. Um, a Democratic source familiar with the negotiations tells NBC News, quote, we're very close but not done yet. Asked whether there could be a deal today. The quote is still possible, but not planning for anything imminent to be announced. The source also says President Biden um, uh, remains engaged from Camp David, where he's expected to be until Sunday. He's got no events, he's got no movement scheduled, and that the negotiations continue. We heard that the uh, negotiations went on until 2.30 this morning. Uh, so uh, let me start with you, uh, Congressman Doggett. You and I have had this conversation before. What are your, what's your sense of where we are right now and how this is going to go down? Well, I remain hopeful. I mean, Republicans have taken us to a new level of irresponsibility. Time is still short. We need this signed into law by next Sunday. Uh, and, uh, and we need action. Uh, I think the, the Republicans have just been engaged in the height of hypocrisy here. They were not worried about the size of the debt when they raised it three times for President Trump, when they borrowed trillions of dollars for tax breaks for those at the top in the multinational corporations. Now they only get concerned about debt reduction uh, when Democrats are in charge. Uh, and I think it has less to do about the size of the deficit than an opportunity to cut programs they never supported for education, for protection of our air and water, for uh, opportunities for people to advance in our society. They didn't support those programs, and so now they see it as an opportunity to cut it and then make way for a huge additional tax cut, perhaps over $3 trillion, uh, that they want to get approved by June the 16th. So this is important, uh, uh, Congressman Smith, to remember that if you don't feel, if you feel that there's more money going out than you'd like or uh, less money coming in, there are two ways to solve this, right? You can either cut spending or you can raise revenues. You can raise taxes on some people. We fully know that the average bus driver in America pays a larger proportion of their, their taxes than do corporations and the wealthy. So that's an absolute option that's open to, to raise taxes on, on some people. Uh, on the other hand, you tweeted on Thursday that Republicans want to cut programs for everyday Americans under the guise of fiscal responsibility, while at the same time pushing through tax cuts for the rich that blow holes through the budget. This is unacceptable. Yeah. Look, I want to footstomp what, what Lloyd said. This has literally nothing to do with fiscal responsibility and reducing the deficit. The Republicans are doing, as Lloyd described, they're, they're driving our economy to the edge of a cliff and for no reason other than to, A, appear like they might want to do something about the deficit or more to the point is exactly what Lloyd said, to basically cut programs for poor people to pay for tax cuts for rich people. That's what they want to do because their proposal doesn't really do anything about the deficit. As you point out, nothing about revenue. I mean, revenue is a huge piece of this. They're not going to bring in any more money. But then nine, over 90 percent of the budget is also not being discussed. They're not going to say anything about mandatory spending. They take defense off the table. They take veterans off the table. You add all of that up, that's over 90 percent of the budget that we're not even talking about. It all comes down to the non-defense discretionary budget. This isn't about fiscal responsibility. The Republicans want to cut programs for poor people so they can continue to cut taxes and jack defense spending up. We'll be in just as bad a place on the deficit as we were before. We'll hurt poor people. Meanwhile, we're placing the entire global economy at risk. The, the irresponsibility here is breathtaking. And we as Democrats, we got to drive this message out there. The idea that people are thinking, well, you know, Democrats, Republicans, they're just arguing about something. No. The Republicans are trying to destroy our economy in the most irresponsible way possible. And we have to drive that message to let people know what's really happening here. Congressman Doggett, I want to uh, put up a pie chart of um, the U.S. budget, how we spend our money, because I, I, I can't imagine that, I, you know, I, 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 I've been turning viewers away for an hour talking about debt limit because it's a, con it's a conversation we shouldn't have. Now I'm going to talk about budgets. But here's the reality. There is a process. Congressman Dent, who was just on, Charlie Dent, former congressman of Pennsylvania, was saying, as had Jen Rubin said last hour, it's a bit of a broken process in America. There's a, there's a complicated but actually laid out progress process for discussion 
discussing how we spend our money. Now, this is pretty much what it looks like. About 19% of our budget goes to Social Security. 15% is spent on health. That's more than most countries spend. 14% is on things like income security. 12% is defense, Medicare, social services. That's basically the pie. There are lots of ways to have reasonable and good faith discussions about what that pie should look like, but that process is a little bit broken. Absolutely, and Adam summed it up very well. I would just add that some of the irresponsibility here affects not only the poorest and most vulnerable of our neighbors, but it reaches right into the middle class. I think of students at the University of Texas or Texas State could see their Pell Grants cut by $1,000 as a result of this. That makes a real difference to many students, particularly first-time students who are struggling there. Uh, we see a Social Security recipient uh, or a veteran uh, wondering whether they're going to make it from one paycheck to another, uh, one uh, benefit that they count on. But specifically on the budget, the point you're making is so important. And you know, we were promised a different world by Republicans. They told us they had a great budget and they would get it out in a timely way. President Biden presented his budget early in the spring. Uh, we have no Republican budget. I've been attending uh, budget committees again this week uh, to find a lot of rhetoric, uh, a lot of talk about wokeness, which they don't even really know what that means, but no specific Republican budget because they don't want to tell the American people specifically how much th they will be hurt in health, in education, in environmental law protection uh, by their measures. They want to keep it all very vague and talk about top lines and budget principles and the like. We need to see a specific budget and that's where we could determine uh, the impact of their bad policies.